Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is November 6th, 2019, and this is part 16 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. Today's video is going to be about the unforgivable sin. Let me give you a little history before we get into that topic. It was almost exactly three years ago today that Donald Trump was elected president of the United States. At first, when he was running for president, I didn't even consider voting for him, in fact. Um, but as time went on, I saw the weakness of the other candidates. I began to hear murmurings of prophecies about Donald Trump, particularly the prophecies given to retired fire, firefighter Mark Taylor. The prophecies made sense to me. Then I listened to the prophecy again and I thought, well, you know, maybe it's not a real prophecy and kind of forgot about it again. But then as time went on, I gave Mark Taylor's prophecies credence again. And Donald Trump, of course, won the nomination. And there really was no question then about who I would vote for because we know, I knew, Hillary Clinton is evil. In fact, it was... Um, 20 years ago or so that I actually had a dream that included Hillary Clinton. And in the dream, I saw a fish in the ocean and suddenly that fish had the face of Hillary on it. And then it was like I was watching a movie and then the movie credits came up and the title of the movie came up and it said, The Beast That Rises From the Sea. Because of that, I wondered if Hillary Clinton would end up becoming president of the United States. And now in retrospect, what I see is that Hillary was part of the whole ruling mechanism of the Bush years, the Clinton years, the Bush years, the Obama years, and that she was, in fact, an integral part of the beast. Now, she was part of the seventh beast. And we see the beast that rises from the sea in Revelation chapter 13. And that beast looks like the dragon who we see in Revelation chapter 12. Another thing I began hearing around the time that Donald Trump was elected in 2016 is this phrase, the Luciferian age is over. I even think that I heard Mark Taylor say something like that. And by the way, I'm looking at the time right now. It's 144. 144 is a prophetic number because 144,000 is the number of the overcomers. Listen to what I'm saying. The Luciferian age is over. That's a huge statement to make. In 2016, I remember reading a book called Zenith 2016. Forget the name of the author. Um, last name was Horn. But it's very compelling because it, he goes into a lot of historical research that points to the year 2016 as being the year when 
all of the prophecies would culminate and we would have then outright flagrant satanic government. Now we've seen, we've seen the signs for many years. The Satanism began coming out blatantly within the last 10 years before 2016. Especially during the Obama years, Satanism began to come out in the open in a very public way. Just consider the, uh, um, the Super Bowls and the halftime shows. I mean, they were filled with satanic imagery. So Donald Trump became president. And, well, we wondered, would he even become president? Because look how they tried to keep him from taking office. They did everything they could to keep Donald Trump from becoming president. And then as soon as he was president, the attacks continued nonstop. They got General Flynn out of his administration right away. And then they got a special prosecutor appointed very early. They've been trying to take Trump out through any way that they can from before he was elected and nonstop since he was elected and nonstop since he was inaugurated as president. And it continues today with the impeachment farce going on in the House of Representatives led by Representative Schiff, who lies continually. Well, consider, consider this. What's going on? Why does everyone hate Donald Trump? Why are there never Trumpers, even in the Republican Party? And why do all of those that are not in the Republican Party hate him? Well, I began to consider these things. And I began to consider Mark Taylor's prophecies, Kim Clement's prophecies, the word that the Luciferian age is over. And I thought, if this is true, now let me say one more thing before I answer that question. Look at what Donald Trump also began to do. He began to attack human trafficking, especially pedophilia and sex trafficking. Unheard of that we had such a push to um, eradicate that kind of an evil from this country. And he was very strongly pro-life, very vocally pro-Christian. And so, considering all these things, I said, if, if these things are true, then... It should be in the Bible because what we're seeing is of such profound historical proportions that I thought surely God would have spoken about this somewhere in the scripture. You know, consider what Donald Trump is doing. From the very beginning, he made it clear that he was against globalism. He was against this climate change agenda that was just a hoax to take money away from the middle class. He made it clear that he opposed the Federal Reserve, that he opposed the hidden deep state operatives that worked in the intelligence agencies. It was no secret. He made it very clear. In fact, if you look back at things he said even before he became president or even ran for president, he was saying things like this. <clears throat> now consider this also. Donald Trump was one of them. 
Donald Trump rubbed elbows with all these players in the deep state. He gave political contributions to the Clintons, to other Democrats, to never Trumper Republicans like Mitt Romney. He went to their parties. Did you know that Donald Trump does not drink alcohol and he does not use drugs? And you know, almost everybody who goes to these parties gets as high as a kite all the time. But here's Donald Trump. Consider this. Think about this. Here's Donald Trump having conversations with all of the world leaders on a regular basis because the rich party with these world leaders and the world leaders love to be part of that action and they too want to be rich because you can only serve God or mammon and all these people are serving mammon. They're all traders, T-R-A-D-E-R-S. The Bible calls them Canaanites. They're merchants. They're always buying and selling. They're always trying to make more money. They serve mammon, not God. Donald Trump is always rubbing elbows with these people. So he goes to the parties. They're all drunk or high on drugs. And, you know, they talk very freely. They say whatever comes to their mind. And... Donald Trump knew all their secrets. He knows all their secrets. But he's made it clear that he's not like them. He's not into pedophilia like Jeffrey Epstein was. Like all of the people who traveled with Epstein to his island were. But Trump knows who they are. So I considered, we have this man now who is the leader of America, president of the United States, commander in chief of the strongest army in the world. And most of the world is attacking him and hates him. Surely this is in the Bible. Surely this is in the Bible. Well, well over a year ago, I thought the Lord had revealed to me that Donald Trump was the beast that we see in chapter 17 of Revelation. And the thing that really made that clear was um, at the very end of 17, it talks about the beast here in 17, but at the very end, it says this. Verse 16, And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast will hate the prostitute. The prostitute is Babylon the Great that we are introduced to in the beginning of this chapter. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. See, the beast, this beast that destroys Babylon the Great, is fulfilling the words of God. That's why I support him. That's why I support the beast here. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Now, I want you to remember that phrase, the great city, because that is one of the keys for interpreting a lot of scripture. We need to understand what the great city is. Here in this chapter, the angel tells us that the great city is the woman. At the beginning of this, the 
The angel carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. Now notice that the woman is riding the beast. The woman is controlling the beast, just like a person controls a horse. You're on the horse, you're riding the horse, you're controlling the horse. So here's, we're introduced to this woman who is controlling this beast. The angel in the middle of this chapter reveals that the beast that John is seeing is the eighth head of the beast, the one that was and is not and is to come. But, but at the very end of this chapter, we see that the beast will hate the prostitute and they will make her desolate and naked. So the beast will turn upon the harlot. So about a year and a half ago, I became, I began thinking that Donald Trump was this head of the beast that would turn against Babylon the Great and would be the one to um, destroy her. The one of the early things that happened in his uh, presidency, and I think this was in October of 2017, he had a, a lot of generals surrounding him. The press was there and he said, this is the calm before the storm. And he was asked repeatedly, what do you mean, the calm before the storm? Already he had been greatly attacked by the deep state by the harlot and uh, he never answered that question well first the Lord began to show me scriptures primarily in the book of Jeremiah particularly in Jeremiah 23 where it talked about the storm of the Lord coming and I began to see that wow this this storm that Donald Trump is talking about is the storm of the Lord. And so I began to look at the context and what it was dealing with and things like that. Well, I did a video or two concerning the storm of the Lord, but it was really before I had fleshed out a lot of the scripture concerning the mystery of the beast. And it was on October 1st, 2018, that I felt the Holy Spirit telling me, do not publish for nine months. And discerned over a short period of time that he was talking about this revelation that Donald Trump is the eighth head of the beast. During the next nine months, God really began to open up a lot of scriptures to me. And you can hear a lot of that revelation in the first 15 videos in this series. And today I want to share one of the very important aspects of this revelation, one that is going to, it's going to be important as we work through our ministries in the Lord, as we do the work of the Lord, we need to understand this. So let's go to Mark chapter three. It starts with Jesus. And again, he entered the synagogue and a man was there with a withered hand and they watched Jesus to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man with the withered hand, come here. And he said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do harm, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. 
You see, they would say it was unlawful to heal a man on the Sabbath because that was working on the Sabbath. And he looked around at them with anger, grieved at their hardness of heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately held counsel with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Why would they want to kill Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath? Jesus was messing with their power structure just like Trump is messing with the harlot's power structure, the deep state's power structure. These Pharisees were part of the deep state. They were part of Babylon the Great at that time because Babylon the Great has existed from the beginning because in her was found the blood of all those slain on the earth. And that, my friends, is first Revelation chapter 18 deals with the fall of Babylon, and you go to the very last verse of that chapter. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all who have been slain on the earth. God holds Babylon the Great responsible for the blood of every single soul in this world. So that means that Cain was controlled by the spirit of Babylon the Great. But what is that spirit? That is the satanic spirit, isn't it? The satanic spirit. Okay, now let's go back. This is very interesting. We're going to go on in that chapter 3 of Mark. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out the demons. And he, that's Jesus, called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. How did this say? How did this begin? Jesus called them to him and said to them in parables. Remember from one of my early videos, a parable is a story that tells a prophetic truth. One day it hit me that this parable is talking about Babylon the Great and the beast. See, both, both parts are part of Satan's kingdom. The beast has always been the, the one that carried out the demonic plan, the satanic plan. It's just like two sides of the same coin. You've got the spiritual aspect of Babylon the Great controlling the physical aspect of the beast who, ca who carries the sword. And so they're both aspects of Satan's kingdom. And yet here at the end, here in Revelation chapter 17, suddenly one aspect of that kingdom, the beast, namely, turns against the satanic ruling principle, which is the harlot, Babylon the Great. What does Jesus say then? It says, verse 26, And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, 
but it's coming to an end. Okay? The Luciferian age is over. The Luciferian age of controlling mankind is coming to an end. That's what, that's what this means. Now, of course, the beast has always been part of the devil's kingdom. Remember, Satan was given authority over all the kingdoms of the earth. The kingdoms of the earth have ruled with satanic power. And now we have the head, the eighth head, that has turned against that satanic power. Think about other things that are happening now. You have, people are calling this the Great Awakening. Why? Because people are awakening to the utter evil and depravity of the satanic spirit. You have people who are walking away. That's a movement now, the walk away movement led by Brandon Straka. They're walking away from the incredible perversity and incredible evil that they see in Babylon the Great. But you know what? They still hold on to lots of their own evil. They're still part of the beast. But they're fighting against Babylon the Great. They have joined the movement, the Donald Trump movement, to take down the deep state. And that is a good fight. I'm in that fight. Remember, Daniel was one of the key counselors in the kingdom of Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar and then Nebuchadnezzar's son and then on into the king of Persia, Cyrus's reign. When you look at the book of Daniel, Daniel always highly respected the king of Babylon. Even though that king sometimes did evil, ordered evil, like he's the one who erected the, the image of the beast, Daniel always respected the ruler of the beast kingdom, which was Nebuchadnezzar. We are in a similar situation with respect to Donald Trump. Donald Trump is God's anointed for this time. I believe that he, that the spirit of Cyrus is upon him. That Cyrus, who was the fourth, the head of the fourth beast kingdom, is now the head of the eighth beast kingdom. And that that beast has risen up against Babylon the Great and the storm is about to get hot. I want to go a little further today with this, and that is into the unforgivable sin, because that follows directly with what with this parable that Jesus said concerning the kingdom of Satan. He said, Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness but is guilty of, here it says, an eternal sin. The word is aeonian. It's an age-lasting sin. It's a particular, for a particular period of time. For they were saying he has an unclean spirit. I'm going to explain what this sin is in a minute. But first I want to draw your attention to something else that, 
that I think is very important and another one of those clues as to what we are seeing now with respect to the identity of Donald Trump and the beast. Look at this at the beginning. It says, all sins will be forgiven the children of man and whatever blasphemies they utter. Let's go to Revelation chapter 13. And look at this. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. Blasphemous names on its heads. This beast, it opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling. And it was allowed to make war on the saints and to overcome them. The beast. The history of the beast has been one of destroying the saint, the Kodashim of God. But the blood of the Kodashim is assigned to the harlot because she's the one that controls the beast. It's the satanic spirit that controls the beast. But this beast is full of blasphemies, it utters blasphemies, and yet Jesus says, whatever blasphemies they utter will be forgiven. Some people have said the mark of the beast cannot be forgiven. That's wrong. We all have the mark of the beast until we submit to the mark of God, which is to walk in his ways, to desire that his law be written upon our hearts. Then he will mark us as his own. When we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, we understand that our salvation is through the blood of Jesus, but yet, we want to live a righteous life because no one will see God without the holiness of God. Now then, so Jesus says all these sins will be forgiven, all these blasphemies, all these horrible things that men say will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an age-lasting sin. Another scripture that talks about this says that Jesus says that they will not have forgiveness in this age, which is the age we live in, or in the age to come, which is the millennium, which is coming. Well, what is this? What is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit? Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit is when you call evil good and good evil. We have an entire book called the Holy Bible that tells us what is good and what is evil. And when you raise up your voice, and there are many, many ministers who do this today, and of course, many politicians who claim they're serving God who do this as well, they call evil good and good evil. Let me give you some examples. To call abortion of a baby a good thing is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. To call the ways of life that Christ and Paul 
and John and others preached evil is to call good evil. To call an evil thing like abortion good is to call evil good. To call the transgendering of a male to a female good is to call evil good. To call putting drag queens in libraries for little children to watch or to read stories to little children good is to call evil good. And we see lots of examples of that. And we've seen it for many years in this nation. The politicians could not pass laws that would make the evil things accepted by the people. And so what they did was to install puppet judges who would, by issue of a legal opinion, would make an evil thing lawful. That is to call evil good. It's all around us. There's such perversion in our courts that it is appalling, especially to me as an attorney who's now practiced for more than 30 years. People who call evil good and good evil cannot have forgiveness because they cannot repent. You must repent. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is repent and believe upon Jesus for the forgiveness of your sins. People who call good evil and evil good do not believe that they have anything to repent of, that they have no need of forgiveness because everything they do is right. They are the... They have become their own gods. They have defined good. They have defined evil. This verse is describing who remains in Babylon the Great. There are at least five instances in the scripture where God tells people to flee from the midst of Babylon, to come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you share in her plagues. Everyone who can repent is now coming out of her. These are the people who are walking away. These are the people that we need to pray with and to love as people who are escaping from the pits of hell. No, they're not yet walking in purity before God. Few are. We need to help those who are coming out of Babylon to make it out. We need to help them. We don't help them if we condemn them. Do not judge before the appointed time, says the Lord. So here we are now. We are at this time in history where the storm is about to hit. I believe it is still the calm before the storm, but the storm is about to get wild and crazy. And it may be that when the storm begins that it's too late for people to come out of Babylon. 
they may actually have to die in Babylon, physically die. The destruction of Babylon may include the physical death of many because they cannot repent. And there is no forgiveness for them in this age or in the age to come. Many of these people will be arrested and they will be tried for treason and they will be tried for crimes against humanity. I support that work. I support the work of Donald Trump and I support the work of those that are working with him to hold these tyrants, these evil people accountable for their sins accountable for their crimes.